Hi and welcome to my maths class. Today we are going to do a sinking fund. Now sinking fund in a simple way is basically all your work that you've done for financial maths in grade 11 put together. Why they call it a sinking fund is because you are actually planning ahead. So you'd usually use a sinking fund when you want to buy large items like maybe a truck or um, a photocopier that's going to cost you 300 or 400,000. So you start planning ahead and you know in five years time I'm going to need this and then you start putting money away so when you need it you don't need to take a big loan from the bank. Now how it basically starts is you're going to go through all the different steps of buying, uh, buying an item. Let us take the following question. Now these questions need to be broken up part by part. If you work slowly and you do each part without trying to run through the whole thing you will be okay right it says that you bought a truck for 400,000 rand it depreciates at 20 percent on reducing balance now stop because that tells you I have a truck and it's going to be worth so much after a certain while what am I using I'm using my depreciation but I'm using the reducing one so we know if we have our pain, we're starting with 400,000. We know our interest for the depreciation is 20%. Right, what is our N? I want to replace the truck after five years. So we know if I'm working with depreciation, I'm going to stop this truck after five years is going to go. Right. Now, the inflation, there's another question, is 6%. Okay, let's do it step by step. You know you're going to work depreciation. Then you're going to work out inflation. So the inflation is 6% per annum. Again, you're going to do your paying. Then you're depositing 50,000 Rand into a sinking fund starting one year after you bought the truck and the last deposit is made at the end of the fifth year. Calculate your shortfall considering that you sold the old truck. Right. When you have this question, it is better to break it up and do it part by part. Now, what happens when you want to buy something? If you think about, let's take something simple like a computer. Okay, so you buy a computer this year, you paid 5,000 rand. Okay, so you go and you buy a computer for 5,000 rand. After three years, the computer is worth maybe 1,000 rand. Okay, you now price a new computer. This new computer is 7,000 rand. But your buddy goes and buys your old computer for a thousand rand. So how much money do you actually need? You only need six thousand rand. Now let's start with a few basic things. It was five thousand rand, now it's gone to seven thousand rand. What happened there? That was inflation. Things go up. So when it's the price is seven thousand rand this year, next year it's ten. If it's five thousand rand this year, next year it's seven thousand rand, the prices go up. But if you have an old product, you can always sell it. Why would you just throw it away? If you sell it, then you know, okay, I want to buy a new one, but I'm selling my old one. So at least I'm making some money. The, old, the new one won't cost me that much. This is the normal norm for all, for all transactions. It's going to work exactly the same for the truck. Right. You're going to have the truck. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to work out the depreciation. So how much is this truck worth after five years? We know we're using this formula because they specifically say reducing balance. So we have 400,000, 1 minus 20 over 100 to the power of 5. Okay, what is the truck worth? The truck is worth 131072, 131,072 rand. Now, what is nice is, usually you have a car, you want to get a new car, you sell the old one. So, 
I know that when I want to buy my new truck, I'm going to sell my old truck and I'm going to get 131,072 rand. But what is the new truck going to cost me? Now we're going to have inflation. So the truck is still 400,000. What is the inflation? The inflation is 6% per annum. The rate is very different from depreciation. So we know that the inflation is 6 over 100. And we are still working with 5 years because we need to work out how much is the new truck after 5 years. Now from grade 10 work, you should know inflation is compound interest. So we're going to use the compound formula. Okay, so we know what the new truck is going to cost us. That is our second important value. Now, what is going to happen? We know we're going to deposit 50,000 Rand into a fund. We're going to start one year after you bought the product. And the last deposit is made at the end of the fifth year. So let's do a timeline for this. You bought the truck now. After one year, we're putting in money. After two years, we're going to put in money. After three years, we're going to put in money. After four years, we're going to put in money. And on the fifth year, we're also going to put in money. So we have 50,000 Rand that we are putting in. Right. Now, you could use the method that we had done in timeline. But I want to teach you a different method. What, I, what you would have done in timeline is you would have, you would have calculated the amount of 50,000 for one year and then you would have added another one, uh, 50,000 and then, so basically at every point you would have stopped. But when they are giving you consistent payments, there's an easier way. So we're making deposits of 50,000 Rand starting one year after you bought the truck and the last payment is made at the end of the fifth year. The interest rate that the bank is going to give you is 13% per annum compounded yearly. Which means they're not changing your I or your N. Remember when these questions are big or huge, they don't try to make too many changes. But that does not mean you mustn't know the changes. Right, now, if you were doing the timeline, you'd write your pain with your 50,000, you'd keep it for a year. And then you'd add 50,000, you'll do your pain again, you'll keep it for a year. But there is a different way. The different method that I want to show you is, you see we're starting here. So, if I say, how long is this 50,000 Rand in the bank? If you count, we have it in one year, two years, three years, four years. So, if I did my interest only for this 50,000, it would be 50, 1 plus, my i is 13 over 100, to the power of, let's see it again. I'm starting here, 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's to the power of 4. Then, let's do the next amount. So I've done this 50,000. Let's do the next 50,000. Again, we know... It's 50,000, 1 plus 13 over 100, but how many years? We're busy here, it's 1 year, 2 years, 3 years. So for 3 years, it's in the bank. Now, now we've done the second 50,000. And we're going to do the third one. How many years is the third one in the bank? One, two. So we've done this one. How long is this one in the bank? For one year. Plus, we have the last 50,000.
but how many years is this one in the bank? This one is in the bank for zero years. Didn't even complete a year, it was just a deposit. When we're doing a timeline like this, the calculation is easier. The reason it is easier is because you're not putting random amounts. You're not putting 1,900 and 5,000 in it. It's quite consistent, so it's but easier. Also, there's not many changes with the interest rates, not going up and down. So you can use this method when you see that each amount can be worked out on its own. Don't use this method when you have subtractions and when you have adding of random amounts like 10,000 and 3,000. Rather use this amount just when there is consistent payments. Right, if you press that in your calculator, okay, which gives us 334,013 rand 53 cents. But now, how much is my shortfall? This is the mon money I have in the bank. This is the bank money. Right. The money I'm going to receive for selling my truck is 131,072 rand. So how much do I have all together? I have 455,085 rand 53 cents. But what is the price of the new truck? 561,020 rand. The price of the new truck is 561,020 rand and 69 cents. We've got that value from inflation. How much money we have? We don't have enough, but we know that we've got 455,085 rand 53 cents. If we subtract this, we would have had a shortfall of 105,935 rand 16 cents. Remember, you would do this because now you only require to borrow about 100,000 from the bank, whereas in had you started, you, without even aiming for the future, you would have had to borrow almost 560,000. Thank you for watching.